Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul, and is it just me, or did Henry's expression at the end of the episode sum up everyone's thoughts on that cliffhanger? Obviously, we have a lot to talk about, and throughout this video, we're going to be going over everything you need to know about the latest episode of The Undoing. There will be heavy spoilers here, so if you haven't had a chance to check out the entry, then I highly recommend that you turn off now. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel, as we will be covering the finale next week, and you definitely don't want to miss it. With that out of the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into the breakdown. Okay, so last week ended on the cliffhanger that Jonathan knew who the killer was, and we thought he might be throwing Grace under the bus. When we first see the couple, he's asking her what she was doing beside Eleanor's that night. However, she's never made a suspect. It's actually Eleanor's husband, Fernando, who gets thrust into the spotlight, and Jonathan is initially uneasy over doing this. This suggests to me that he was thinking Grace could have done it and could have been questioning her in order to find out whether she blacked out or not. Anyway, episode 5 picks up in the wake of the Gone Girl-esque TV interview in which Jonathan admitted to loving Eleanor. We catch Henry watching over this, and as Jonathan says he knows who carried out the crime, the boy's face stares back at his, suggesting that Henry was indeed the one who did it. Now we do learn throughout this entry that Henry did originally cover for his father, and that he was suspicious of his dad and guessed that something was going on with him and Eleanor. It is possible that he could have followed the pair after the party, and then killed her in order to stop the failure of his parents' marriage. Jonathan's DNA was found at the scene of the crime, but because they are father and son, Henry too would share this blood, and thus it could indeed be him. The show has very much carried a similar feeling to Defending Jacob, which is definitely a series that you should check out if you're enjoying this. Anyway, Henry has the motive, knew of the affair, and the murder weapon is also in his violin case. However, I do think that this is a red herring, and it could be that Henry did indeed discover what had happened, and he covered for his dad by hiding the hammer. The reason he held off on telling his mother about spotting Eleanor is because he says that he felt like his father trusted him, and in my opinion, this extends beyond the affair. At the restaurant scene, Henry very much tries to repair the relationship, and also win his mother back around to his father, because he wants a family more than anything. However, in dramatic terms, I think that the Henry reveal has been dropped at the end of episode 5, so that when the real reveal of the killer comes next week, it's gonna be a big shock. Grace is actually so in love and blinded by her husband, that she may even suspect Henry did it at this point, and I don't think that she can really trust anyone. It is possible that Henry followed his father, caught him killing Eleanor, and then agreed to help him cover things up and hid the weapon so that the prosecution had less evidence. The murder weapon being missing is a big thing that comes up as something that will help Jonathan when things go to court. And I guess the police didn't do a very good job of searching the property because that would have definitely been one of the places I looked. Anyway, go to court things do and Grace must play that she loves Jonathan in order to manipulate the jury into seeing their relationship in a certain light so that the murder is shifted away from him. The defense really started to put the blame on Fernando and Franklin really struggles with this and the episode itself thematically is very much about an image versus the truth. Sure, you can convince people Fernando killed his wife, but is it the truth? Sure, Jonathan might be innocent and seem that way, but can we trust him? Sure, Tubin looks like he's working again, but is he actually doing this? Is Lubin with Tubin a thing? And is is should I stop talking about this now? Yes, definitely. Anyway, back to the episode. Sure, the police said they investigated everyone. And if they didn't, does that mean they're people we can trust? It's questions like these that rise throughout the entry, and no, that's not a Tubin pun. And I think this show has done a fantastic job of keeping us guessing about who is really behind the crime. Now, I am still of the mind that it is indeed Jonathan, and so far the episodes have thrown us teasers and cliffhangers to suggest that it is other characters like his son and wife. However, this episode we learn the truth about his dog past, namely that he was responsible for his sister's death. If you read the book, then you'll know this was a very important reveal, and it explained why Jonathan had stayed so distant from his family. There are some minor changes, such as it being his brother Aaron in the source material, but on the whole, it's very much in line with the book's plot. Now with this comes the fact that Jonathan has lied about the event to pretty much everyone outside of his immediate family. He's covered things up and fled from it, much like how he fled after Eleanor was killed. There's a pattern that re-emerges here, 
and it's extremely suspicious that two young vulnerable females in his life that he apparently cared for both ended up dead. This is why I believe that they changed it from his brother in the book to his sister in the show as we're meant to be mentally joining the dots to see how history has repeated itself. Jonathan apparently showed absolutely no remorse over this and a trauma such as losing your child's sibling renders some people psychotic. The other women in his life that were part of these two major events such as his wife and mother, they have a view of him where they believe they know what happened deep down but their image of Jonathan has warped this. Now Jonathan's mother I think is well aware of what happened and likely thinks that he killed both his sister and Eleanor. However, Grace isn't there yet and as the episode progresses, Jonathan wins her back round. At one point in the episode, she returns to the house and the pair spend the night together. This shows that even though he's admitted to an affair, that he loved another woman and likely killed her, Grace wants to remain in this dream world. Her father did state that she fell for Jonathan simply because she told him what the perfect man for her was and that he simply altered himself to be this way. If the character is a master manipulator, then this would be well within his wheelhouse and even his lawyer accused him of being able to mesmerize people which Grace is a victim of if our theories are correct. Now a lot of you on the last video dropped comments about how you think that the second woman he had an affair with might actually be Sylvia. Upon reading these, I had a big aha moment and I definitely agree that it's the case. However, I think it might actually extend beyond this and that there could be more than one woman. This would make things more awkward than the restaurant scene. You know the one where, where the waiter was cleaning the table. A hey, miss restaurants I do, but you know there are a lot of hints here. Anyway, Jonathan seems happy for Fernando to take the fall which, like the situation with his sister, shows he has little remorse over the loss of someone's life. Now whilst I do think that it is him, I also believe that he could get away with the crime as his lawyer has done an incredible job of casting doubt over his guilt. She brings up the fact that he is the father of Eleanor's child and also makes Fernando violently lash out in court after asking about his wife's psychiatric problems. As we know, she was obsessed with Grace I think these mental issues could swing things in his favour. It will however come down to Grace in the finale and she will have to decide whether to bring the murder weapon to light and tear her family apart or continue living in this untrue reality in which she believes everything is perfect. I really think that it's going to cause a lot of conflict and the character will have to decide to put the life she's loved to the side in order to do the right thing. It's all going to kick off and unfortunately my breakdown of the finale will come a bit late next week. HBO and Sky Atlantic have been sending me the episodes slightly earlier so I could prepare my videos but they want everyone to keep tight lift on the last episode so I'll be watching at the same time as you guys. Probably still be up on the Monday but yeah don't call the police if I'm a couple of minutes late. Anyway that concludes the episode and obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on it as well as what your theories are. If you enjoy this video then please drop a thumbs up and make sure you check out our breakdown of last week's entry which will be linked at the end. Don't forget we're giving away 3 copies of the Marvel Phase 2 box set and all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 30th of November so make sure you get involved. If you want to support the channel and get to see content early then please consider clicking the join button below. You can also come chat to us on the discord server linked in the description or heavy spoilers on Twitter. Thanks for making it until the end of the video, you've been the best, I've been Paul and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.